will discuss some uh, residual issues in GST. At present, uh, these issues are not uh, really relevant for our day-to-day -day, uh, matters. Actually, for day-to-day -day matters, what is relevant is supply of goods and services, valuation, uh, these are uh, returns. These are day-to-day. Uh, -day. So these topics are not for day-to-day -day, uh, use. But of course, uh, as and when need arises, they are surely uh, relevant. Now, uh, this administration of GST, there will be dual control. That is, SGST will be controlled by state authorities and uh, CGST and IGST by central authorities. For small taxable persons, up to turnover of rupees 1.5 crore, it is expected that control will be only by uh, state uh, authorities. Of course, it doesn't mean that central uh, authorities are barred from uh, going there, but normally they are not expected to go there. Now, as far as SGST is concerned, the present ranking, the highest rank in SGST is commissioner in the present hierarchy. But in uh, IGST, uh, commissioner is only one of the uh, Right. Above commissioner, there are many posts like principal commissioner, chief commissioner, principal chief commissioner, etc. CBC. Now in uh, uh, excise or in, uh, IGST, the highest authority will be CBC, Central Board of Excise and Customs. Unless they change the name, they may change the name, but as of today, the name is Central Board of Excise. Just like we have got CBDT, we have got. Uh, uh, see, Central Board of Excise and Custom. When the GST comes, they may change the name. But till the name is changed, it will continue to be uh, CBC. Now, uh, this CBC will administer this act. Now, these powers will be exercised by proper officer. The person, the officer, now for example, let us say for demand, uh, assistant commissioner will be designated as a proper officer. That means superintendent cannot uh, issue a Demand. So for everything, say for permission, I mean, I am giving example, for permission for job work, say superintendent is proper officer, say, then a superintendent can, uh, so for every work, they will designate a proper, proper officer. officer and that proper officer will be empowered to do that, uh, uh, exercise those powers. Of course, there is a provision that any person above that rank, can also exercise that power. If this, that means the power is given to assistant commissioner, your commissioner can exercise that power because he is above the rank. But then superintendent will not be uh, able to exercise that uh, power. So this is for delegation of power, where all powers are the CBC. And then CBC will give those delegate powers to the concerned uh, uh, officers. In GST, SGST, generally all powers are with the commissioner of uh, is GST and then he delegates the uh, powers to uh, subordinate authorities. Now, this is the definition of a taxable person. Taxable person is one who carried on business and who is registered or required to be registered. So, if he is required to be registered and even if he doesn't register, then he will still be a uh, taxable person. Luckily, what they have said, employee is not a uh, taxable person. So, employee, they are taken out of the definition of a taxable person, but not employer. Employee, service provided by employee to employer is uh, uh, not GST. No, but uh, service provided by employer to employee, it can be uh, covered under GST. Now, person whose turnover is below specified limits or who is engaged in non-taxable supplies is not a taxable person. Agriculturist is not a taxable person. Now, individual, firm, HUF, company, LLP, government, local authority, society, trust, all are uh, persons under GST. So, for example, like trust, trust is not a person under the uh, general law, but here it is defined as a person. Even firm is uh, not a body corporate, a partnership firm, but still it is treated as a person. AOPA, AOP and POI are also person under GST, whether or not they are incorporated. Even if they are not uh, registered or incorporated, they will still be a uh, taxable person under uh, GST. Sir, so, is autonomous body? Huh? Of course, uh, it is a body corporate. Autonomous uh, body are generally body corporate. And all body corporates are uh, covered. Government is also a body corporate. Local municipal corporation is also a body corporate. 
पंचायत इज ऑल्सो ए बॉडी कॉर्पोरेट एंड दे विल बी टैक्सेबल सोसाइटी में कॉपरेटिव सोसाइटी इट विल इट इज इट विल बी टैक्सेबल इट इज अ पर्सन नाउ एज सर्विस प्रोविजन ऑफ रिवर्स चार्ज दैट इज इन मेनी केसेस द सर्विस इंस्टेड ऑफ सर्विस प्रोवाइडर द सर्विस रिसीवर इज लाइबल टू पे दी सर्विस एक्ट सिमिलर प्रोविजन विल बी देयर इन जी एस टी एंड हियर इट इज नॉट बी ओनली इन केस ऑफ सर्विसेज इट कैन बी इन केस ऑफ गुड्स ऑल्सो जनरली दी प्रोविजन्स ऑफ रिवर्स चार्ज आर मेड एप्लिकेबल वेर गवर्नमेंट फाइंड्स इट डिफिकल्ट टू कलेक्ट टैक्स फ्रॉम दैट एट दैट पॉइंट प्रोवाइडर ऑफ सर्विस और सप्लायर ऑफ गुड्स और वेर दे फील दैट द टैक्स रिविजन इज हेवी वेर दे फील द टैक्स रिविजन इज हेवी एंड वेर दे फील दैट इट विल बी इजियर टू कलेक्ट द टैक्स फ्रॉम दिस रिसिपेंट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज दे कैन मेक सच प्रोविजन इन सर्विस टैक्स इज ऑल्सो देयर इन एक्साइज ऑल्सो इन फ्यू प्रोडक्ट्स इट इज देयर इवन टूडे दैट विल बी कैन बी एक्सटेंडेड इन एडिशन टू दैट रिवर्स चार्ज देर विल बी ए प्रोविजन ऑफ द टैक्स डिडक्शन एट सोर्स एट वन परसेंट इफ वैल्यू ऑफ कॉन्टैक्ट एक्सीड्स रुपीज टेन लैक्स इट इज एप्लीकेबल टू ऑल गवर्नमेंट एजेंसी बट इट कैन बी मेड एप्लीकेबल टू लॉर्ज कंपनीज ऑल्सो बाई इशू ऑफ ए नोटिफिकेशन सो इट इज पॉसिबल then they will cover large companies also in the uh, ambit of this uh, tds now this uh, 1% tds as on today is mainly for control purposes because once he, uh, he uploads uh, your 1% return uh, the department will immediately know okay this is your uh, turnover and they can uh, ask you whether you have paid gst on this particular turnover but slowly it is 1% according to me in 4 5 years this will become uh, Five percent. That could be too much because in case of sale of goods, I am deducting five percent. That could be the total profit margin of the business. No, not profit margin. You have to pay eighteen percent, na GST. Uh, so so that was the GST. When you pay eighteen percent, then you will get credit of this five percent, and you have to pay only that. So it is not a actually uh, that will loss. But if you are not paying GST, then that will be cost to uh, you. So these tedious provisions. Uh, i think they will slowly expand the uh, scope now again in case of e-commerce there is a provision of tax collection at uh, source that this flipkart this is i fear aware they actually don't sell the goods if you get a uh, goods from uh, flipkart or uh, amazon the invoices of some uh, unknown party who you are not uh, heard the name that address also you are not aware so actually the goods are supplied and sold by somebody uh, else e-commerce are only actually uh, Uh, they are platform. providing a platform, platform for you to uh, uh, now. So as of today, this uh, e-commerce uh, like Flipkart etc. They are not subject to uh, GST because actually they are not engaged in uh, sale of goods. Even under GST, they are not actually supplying the goods and uh, services because goods and services are supplied by some uh, third party. To bring them in the uh, GST net, what they have said, they 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 will have to collect the tax at source. What are they selling in there? The, the e-commerce people, they will have to collect the tax at source. But that order is collected at source. Its credit will be available to the actual uh, supplier. That means there is no loss of there is no double taxation as such. But uh, instead of that supplier paying tax, actually first the tax will be paid by this e-commerce, and then the uh, the uh, Dealer who is actually selling the goods, he can take the credit. So there is no double taxation uh, asset uh, in this. But uh, they want to collect the tax uh, at the first possible opportunity. And surely it is easier to collect tax from e Amazon and Flipkart than from this. Uh, uh, so this must be the supply to who are not direct. Uh, जो सेलर था वो बायर को दे रहा है नहीं वो बाद में देखा ना पहले ई के पास जाएगा ई कॉमर्स विल पास ऑन दैट ऑर्डर टू दी एक्चुअल सप्लायर एक्चुअल सप्लायर विल मेक द इनवाइस बट फाइल पे ही विल चार्ज जीएसटी बट ही विल गेट क्रेडिट ऑफ द टैक्स कलेक्टेड एट सोर्स बाय दिस ई कॉमर्स पीपल लाइक अमेजन और तो सपोज पैसा लिया और एक्चुअली फॉर सम रीजन सेल नहीं हुआ क्रेडिट टोट कैन ऑलवेज बी शू दैट प्रोजेक्ट सर 
तो अल्टीमेटली उसका इनपुट मिलेगा बाद दैट वुड बी टेकन एज माय इनपुट फिर ये सपोज इसने फ्लैप कास्ट ने 20 परसेंट टैक्स भर दिया उसका क्रेडिट वो सप्लायर को मिलेगा ना इन फिटली दैट मीन्स ही ही विल नॉट हैव टू पे इनी टैक्स एक्चुअल सप्लायर क्योंकि उसको बिल में ट्वेंटी परसेंट लगाएगा पर उसको ट्वेंटी परसेंट तो फ्लिपकार्ट क्या अमेजोन ने चार्ज लगा टैक्स भरा है उसका उसको क्रेडिट मिलेगा तो इफेक्टिवली एक्चुअली ही ही विल नॉट हैव टू पे एनी कंट्री लाइक इंडिया देर इज ह्यूज सेल्स रिटर्न इन केस ऑफ ई कॉमर्स कंपनी अराउंड फिफ्टी परसेंट आइटम्स आर रिटर्न सो वन टी डी एस इज डिडक्टेड एंड प्रोविजन दैट इफ गुड्स आर रिटर्न विद इन सिक्स मंथ देन यू कैन टेक दी क्रेडिट इफ गुड्स आर रिटर्न विद इन सिक्स मंथ of supplier and then goods are returned then they have to reverse reverse of course possible so what is the difference between reverse charge and tds ha reverse charge mein to 100% dena hai reverse charge mein aapko pura 100% rupees same ha mechanism no no reverse charge means aapko pura 100% tax aapko hi bharna hai that's all so reverse charge these three concepts are independent of uh, actually either and these follow these are applicable in entirely different uh, sorts of uh, situation reverse charge me himself has to pay tax uh, no question arises in tds you only have to deduct 10% balance has to be paid by the actual uh, supplier of goods and services while paying the tax he can take credit of that uh, 1% but sir e commerce companies ko to bahut frequently apne rectify karna padega jisse agar goods return hote jayengi tcs unhone collect kar liya पर तो क्रेडिट कोड इशू करके एडजस्ट कर सकते हैं छह महीने में अगर गुड्स रिटर्न आता है तो वो एडजस्ट कर सकते हैं जीएसटी Uh, HGST is payable. Now this tax collection at source, uh, he can utilize that credit either for HGST uh, or CGST or uh, HGST. There is no. Uh, But sir, uh, just for Flipkart is registered in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Flipkart is registered in Bangalore and the supplier is of Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And I am from Delhi. I place order on Flipkart. Now the place of supply would be location of Flipkart. Flipkart is not the location of Flipkart. Wrong okay. place. So you don't mix up tax collection. No, no, sir. I am not talking about TCS matters. Hmm. But in that case, the location would be uh, place of supply of goods would be Bangalore. Hmm. No, no, Bangalore. no, no, no. Delhi. From where goods are supplied. So where the moment of good terminates. Terminates. So Delhi. Delhi over. So, so there you will be charged. But sir, in this case, third parties. Uh, He will charge IGST. Suppose third party is located in Chennai. सर अगर आपने कहा था ना प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स में अगर थर्ड पार्टी की डायरेक्शन पे गुड्स सप्लाई हो रहे हैं तो सर लोकेशन ऑफ थर्ड पार्टी सर इस केस में क्या थर्ड पार्टी फ्लिपकार्ट थर्ड पार्टी नहीं बन जाएगा तो प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई थर्ड पार्टी वाले नहीं लगेंगे तो आईजीएसटी लगेगा टैक्स में बट सर इससे प्रॉब्लम तो ये होगा ना दिल्ली के अंदर गुड्स आ रहे हैं लेकिन फ्लिपकार्ट भी बेंगलोर के अंदर है और सप्लायर सप्लायर भी बेंगलोर के अंदर है तो जो बेंगलोर के अंदर गवर्नमेंट है वो रेवेन्यू कलेक्ट कर रही है लेकिन रियलिटी के अंदर तो के पास आना चाहिए ना डेस्टिनेशन डेस्टिनेशनेशन हो जाएगी नहीं दिन दिन टू अमेंड दैट प्रोविजन अंदर इसी आई टेल यू वो जो प्रोविजन है ना कि ऑन द इंस्ट्रक्शंस ऑफ थर्ड पर्सन एक्चुअली दैट इज नॉट मेड फॉर ई कॉमर्स एक्चुअली उसका पर्पज क्या है उसका पर्पज डिफरेंट है उसका पर्पज एक्चुअली है जॉब वर्क के लिए जो प्रोविजन है 
they are actually meant for uh, job work transactions kids uh, to avoid the double uh, uh, movement of uh, uh, goods or double transportation so this provision is actually not meant for uh, uh, e-commerce they will have to make some different provision so maybe the drafting you have to change uh, in fact uh, under uh, in any law uh, there is a provision to for removal of difficulties in gst also the provision of removal of difficulties is there because when the new uh, law come such uh, problems arise where you cannot think of each and every problem when you right. draft a law even god will not be able to uh, Uh, do it. So then, that's why there is a provision for removal of uh, practical difficulty. That if during two three years, uh, if some uh, issue arises, which is not provided in the law, then uh, you can uh, the GST council can issue a recommendation, and then you can issue a removal of difficulty order. If you are aware, in company law also there is a uh, provision for removal of uh, difficulty order, and so far they issued more than a dozen removal of difficulty order. Practically amending the uh, company law provisions, many of the removal of difficulty order are actually uh, amending the company law. Similar in finding our constitutional amendment bill also, there is a provision that if there is any difficulty comes in in implementing the uh, constitutional amendment, it is possible. You cannot visualize all sorts of uh, situations, and it is possible that some unexpected problem. Uh, will come in while implementing this constitutional amendment and that is why they have made a provision in the constitution gst cons- amendment bill itself that if at all such uh, difficulty comes then president can issue an order uh, for removal of uh, difficulty and that is required because in a new uh, when you cannot envisage all sorts of uh, situation that can arise you have to make sure because every time then you cannot go to parliament that may take 2 3 years to go to parliament and uh, 15% of the state but now uh, you cannot wait for that and that is why they made a provision that uh, president can issue an order uh, of course president on his own will not issue it has to come through council and uh, uh, gst council and all that but provision has been made because that can be fast that will be very fast instead of going for a constitutional amendment anyway another provision is relating to job work actually sending of material for job work is also a supply but uh, they have made a provision for uh, the paying gst every time you send material for job work it will be absolutely a uh, impractical uh, uh, thing to do and that is why they have made say you can send the goods for job work without payment of uh, gst now the present provision is that you have to get a permission from commissioner now this is absolutely uh, impractical you cannot get uh, prom- you cannot go to commissioner every time for getting a permission for sending material to upper they will uh, have to amend it now direct dispatch of inputs to place of job worker and direct dispatch of final product from place of job worker is also uh, permitted to avoid the double uh, 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 double taxation and double movement of uh, goods that has been allowed uh, of course it is to avoid the transport uh, cost then goods should be returned within 180 days if goods are not returned within 180 days or tax should be paid within 180 days then you will have to pay uh, gst so goods include both inputs and capital goods ah uh, goods will include both. even in case of capital goods uh, it has to be done within 180 days 180 days because currently there are two year time uh, limit they will have to amend the law as per the present provision it is only 180 days in all the case they will extend it now uh, you see it, ultimately for government also it is a uh, learning process trial and re- error process so uh, it is not that government will is uh, able to visualize all sorts of situation and imagine all sorts of uh, problems uh, uh, that can arise डायरेक्ट कनेक्शन नहीं हो सकता सर डायरेक्ट ही है लेकिन पता नहीं क्या है प्रॉब्लम है वायर में एनीवे ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट इशू इज रिलेटिंग टू असेसमेंट एंड ऑडिट प्रिंसिपली इन जस्ट लाइक इनकम टैक्स और सर्विस टैक्स इट इज बेसिकली ए से
Even the return also says, I am, uh, as per my opinion, this is my tax and all that. Now, there has been a made provision for provision assessment, if you cannot decidedly value, etc. There is also a provision for summary assessment and a best judgment assessment that if you just don't declare anything, then he has only option to go for uh, best judgment uh, assessment. Summary assessment means for small assesses, uh, there is a quick provision for determining the uh, assessable value. Now, tax authorities can audit the account. There is a specific provision for audit. Now, as you know, under service tax and excise, there is a lot of issues going on whether tax, um, uh, they can audit the accounts and really our court has said that they have no powers to uh, audit the accounts. To avoid that jamela, now GST Council has made a specific provision empowering authorities to do uh, audit. tax audit. Uh, of course, even otherwise, even today under law, they have sufficient powers, but some of the delay have said that they have no powers to do um, audit. Uh, in addition, there is a provision for special audit by a chartered accountant or a cost and management accountant. But that special audit will be only on the basis of a special yeah. author uh, order issued by commissioner for special purposes. Otherwise, this is uh, audit by department will be a routine type of audit. In addition, there is an audit of CAG, that is Control and Audit General, CAG audit. Now that CAG audit is not under any of this uh, uh, GST provision, that CAG audit is under uh, constitutional power itself. CAG has constitutional authority to conduct audit of government and uh, semi-government uh, authority. Now, even if you are a private company, as far as your taxation is concerned, it is part of the government uh, revenue and that is why through that constitutional provisions, CNAG has powers to conduct audit of the uh, uh, tax, private taxable persons also. Otherwise, uh, CNAG audit is only for uh, 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 semi-government, but because you are paying government revenue, from that angle, as far as your government revenue is concerned, or your payments regarding government is revenue is concerned, CNAG has powers to uh, conduct audit of uh, private, private taxable persons also. But uh, that is under constitutional powers, it, it is not under GST law. Next is demand and recovery. Now, demand uh, order is required to be passed normally within three years from due date of filing of uh, annual return or actual date of filing, date of filing whichever is earlier. earlier. And this period can be extended to five years in case of fraud, willful misstatement or suppression of fact. And this is a very major change from the present provisions. You see, present provision is that you have to issue, huh? You have to issue show cause notice within one year. Two year. Now it is two years for service tax. Uh, for service tax, it is now it is 30 months. For excise law, it is uh, two years. But the present provision is that you have to raise the demand, issue a show cause notice within that two years or 30 months. You can pass orders even after 10, 20 years. But now here he has to demand pass the order demand. within. Uh, so, it, actually it is a very good step ki yes, there is some time limit for issue of the uh, demand. At present, you just, they, they can issue so called notice within that and then they can pass uh, at the place. Now, uh, they, uh, the three years is to pass the order and uh, uh, actually it becomes, uh, practically it becomes uh, uh, almost four years because that three years is from the date of annual return. Uh, up, so that way after the year, annual return is after 9 months and then 3 years after that. So that time is there but at least within that period they have to issue the order. Mere um, uh, raising the Shukar notice is not uh, uh, sufficient. Tax, then another provision is tax collected must be paid to government. Once you collect an uh, amount representing a tax, then that has to be paid to government even if it was payable or not payable. Now, of course, once uh, uh, tax is payable, then the normal powers of recovery are provided in the GST law. Uh, they can uh, confiscate your, I mean, uh, seize your property, they can sell your property, they can attach your property. Then uh, there is a garnish uh, proceedings also. Uh, I, I don't know whether you are aware of uh, uh, garnish proceedings, but garnish proceedings may suppose uh, 
I have not paid the uh, taxes. taxes. Uh, and now some amount is recover, uh, recoverable from me. Now I am uh, required, I mean I, I have got a creditor from which I am uh, uh, I am getting some, or I am expected to or I am uh, eligible to get money from that creditor. In that case, government can order that creditor. Instead of paying to me, you pay directly to uh, government. That is the uh, basic principle of uh, garnishment proceeding that if uh, a defaulter if he is getting is eligible to get some money from a third person then government can order that creditor or third person if you don't pay to him you pay to the government so this is the principle of garnishment proceeding but of course garnishment proceedings can be done only when the demand is confirmed that is when the uh, recovery is actually due at the time of show cause notice uh, you cannot do it or even at appellate stage you cannot do it uh, suppose he has filed an appeal, then you cannot uh, uh, do with garnishment proceedings. Now, again, the provision is GST is the first charge on property. So now, uh, uh, for example, even if a bank has a security, but GST will override that uh, security of the bank because it is a first charge on the property. Once it is first charge on the property, it to, that security will be over and above the security which is created by the bank. So suppose even bank has a mortgage or financial institution has a mortgage over the property, the dues of GST will be over the above of the bank or financial institutions. <coughs> so that is the meaning of the first charge. But sir, if SCRA or Sarfasi made GST second charge, how they can write here it is first charge on property? You see, Sarfasi, any specific provision always prevails over a general provision. So now, when the GST has made a specific provision, that will override the provision sender. Because in companies it also uh, taxation of excise and other have second charge, not first charge. So mm. now they have written here it is first charge. Yes. So there is a contradiction between different. No, there is no contradiction. In fact, this there is a general provision that if there are two provisions, one is a specific provision and other is a general provision. The specific provision prevails over a. Uh, yeah. But sir, who will decide which one is specific? If there are two equally specific provisions, latter prevails over earlier provision. Now, surely GST law is a uh, yeah, latter yeah. provision. So, latter provision will prevail over a. So, if there are two specific provisions, latter provision will prevail over the earlier provision. Okay. Next is refunds. Now, present time limit is one year. Uh, now, that will be extended to two years. So this time limit does not apply if tax or interest was paid under protest. If you don't agree and still want to be on safe side or save interest, you can pay under protest. Then a time limit of two years is not applicable. But just say you have to actually make the right to department and paying under protest and all that, then only that department, uh, uh, protest is valid. Then the refund of input tax credit, you will also get refund of input tax credit on exports. So if you are making exports, uh, you don't have to pay tax, but whatever input tax credit is there, you can get a uh, refund. In case of deemed exports, that is supplies to... No, no, SCZ is export. SCZ is not uh, deemed export. But in some cases, uh, like say international competitive bidding, uh, etc., it is deemed export. Now, EOU is also a deemed export, but EOU will be mostly in uh, GST chain. So for supplies to EOU, uh, refund may not be there, but for international bidding, uh, supplies to U United Nations, World Trade Organization, they have got a specific privileges. Uh, there, if you make supply and if you charge GST, you will get a uh, refund. These are all deemed exports. The deemed exports means actually goods do not uh, leave India. But say supplies to United Nations, supplies to UN bodies, supplies to international, where international uh, uh, bidding is there because WTO or I mean this uh, World Bank it finances in foreign currency for uh, big projects and there you there is an international bidding that is even an Indian bidder can also bid and foreign bidder can also bid because it is financed by the 
World Bank. No, World Bank will say that no, I, I will not allow only Indian trader. Anybody can compete. No, suppose Indian bidder uh, submits a bid in the international uh, bidding, which is financed by this uh, World Bank or similar uh, bodies, and uh, it is treated as a deemed export because uh, it is I am competing with all the foreign. Uh, Bidding because for foreign suppliers also can bid in that international bidding contract. So these are treated as deemed exports. Supplies to UN, UN, UN they are treated as uh, deemed export. There I will to charge GST, but I will get a refund of uh, GST. Now this refund is always subject to unjust. Not sub, I mean not deemed export, but other reports are subject to deemed exports. I mean unjust enrichment. Unjust enrichment means uh, what it means that if I recovered the tax from my uh, customer, then I cannot get the uh, refund. refund because then it will be double benefit. I can recover the amount from my customer also, and also government is granting me refund. So this is the basic doctrine of unjust enrichment that if you record the amount tax uh, 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 from the customer, then you cannot uh, claim a refund. Now another is that. Uh, whatever refund you are claiming, that uh, refund you should not pass on to your customer. You should not pass on that uh, uh, refund to your um, uh, that burden to your customer. When you are claiming some amount as refund, you should not pass on that burden to your customer. And that is why whatever amount you are claiming, you should show it as receivable, receivable in your uh, books of account. If you show it as, if you don't show it as uh, receivable, that means you are charged up to your uh, profit and loss account. So that means indirectly you are recovered it from your uh, customer through overheads. So if at all you want to uh, claim some amount as a receivable uh, refund, then you have to show it as a receivable in your uh, books of account, and not as you cannot charge. You should not charge it to your uh, loss. If you charge it to your profit and loss account, then uh, it will not be allowed as a uh, refund. That means the government will say you are recovered from your customer through uh, overheads. Now, uh, that is one of the precaution you have to take when you file a uh, refund claim. Otherwise, that will not be allowed. Then, in case of exports, 80% of the amount will be provisionally. Uh, allowed in case of export and balance it will be on the basis of uh, uh, scrutiny etc. So refund claim is to be decided within 90 days from so they have given a time limit of 90 days to decide a uh, refund claim but what they have said completed application means this paper was not there so it is not uh, the refund application was not come the government ne unke paas khud apna kuch rakha hai what they say refund claim from complete application they say this paper was not there so uh, 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 90 days ka hum ne aapko count nahi hoga 90 days so uh, uh, but anyway theoretically at least uh, Unless uh, if you submit an application within 90 days, if you don't, uh, they don't pay. Interest is required to be uh, paid. So interest will be payable on uh, delayed refund. But to ensure that interest is not payable, they added the words for complete application. That means uh, they will say that form nahi tha, amuk nahi tha, isse signature nahi tha. So it was not complete. So aapko uh, refund interest uh, nahi milega. Anyway. Now so there will be no concept of duty free procurement of imports under GST. In principle, no. In principle, uh, there is no concept of procurement of duty free inputs. Uh, there, there is again no the concept of rebate. Huh? There will be no concept of rebate of duty. No, no. By upon export, there will be uh, concept of rebate of duty. If you export the goods and whatever input credit is available, you will get a refund. But uh, it is there is no concept of getting duty free inputs. Of course, there is no legal bar. They can issue a, on the basis of a recommendation of GST Council. They can always issue a notification. But that is not the basic idea. Now these are powers of GST officer. They have got powers of inspection. They can seize the document. These are all normal powers which are given. They can seize the books. They can have transit checks. 
they can have detain and seize goods. They have got powers to issue summons. They can they have to issue summons and you are required to be present and give the uh, evidence and all that. Then uh, you have uh, your your liability is to submit books records for audit and uh, scrutiny. It is your liability to uh, submit the records. Then they have got powers of arrest, but of course that can be with permission of uh, commissioner. If the amount exceeds rupees 50 lakhs, now so this is a too uh, meager amount. That uh, 50 lakhs limit has no sense. It has to be increased uh, substantially. Then they have got uh, powers of test purchases of goods and services. Now well, this test purchase means uh, so they can go to a dealer and say you give me the goods. And then they will check whether he is giving invoice or he is not giving invoice. So these powers are with them. Uh, they can go and test. Even today they are there but they are not much using those powers. But they have got powers to test purchase the goods and uh, uh, samples. And then so, uh, so if you don't, if they you charge GST normally, then they have got powers to return the uh, goods also. Then samples, they have got powers to take samples and check the uh, the samples for your whatever it may be. So these are the powers of uh, officers. Then the demand will be raised by the authority who is the adjudicating authority. In case of GST, that authority is always below the commissioner. In case of state GST, the authority will be the confirming the demand is always the powers below uh, commissioner. But in case of CGST and SGST, today the powers are with commissioner also. That is, commissioner also can confirm a demand of uh, excise and service tax above 50 lakhs. Now, whether that will continue under uh, uh, C CGST, it is still not uh, clear. But possibly, if the am amount is more than 50 lakhs, it may be decided by uh, commissioner in case of CGST and IGST. But there is no such provision in uh, uh, state law. State law it is always below the rank of uh, commissioner. Now, if you file an appeal, uh, you can file with first appeal with the first uh, author, appellate authority. That, that appellate authority in case of SGST will be in the rank of commissioner. But in case of uh, SGST, it may be higher than commissioner because in uh, uh, CGST and SGST, the commissioner himself can be uh, adjudicating authority. Uh, you don't know what will happen in uh, uh, CGST. But if commissioner is adjudicating authority, then naturally appellate authority has to be higher than the rank of uh, commissioner. So in the first appeal, you have to deposit 10 percent of the uh, amount. And that amount means tax, interest and penalty. Tax, all the total 10 percent is required to be uh, and uh, uh, that power, uh, there are powers of revision in SGST. Commissioner can revise the order which is passed by the authority lower than uh, commissioner. Uh, but under CGST, there is uh, no such powers of revision. Uh, even today under state court law, there is powers of uh, revision with uh, commissioner. He can revise the order of uh, uh, authority below uh, the commissioner. But under C uh, at least under CGST, uh, under the draft law, there is no such power with uh, central authorities to revise the orders of the uh, lower authorities. Now, second appeal has to be filed before National Goods and Service Tax uh, Appellate Tribunal, NGSTAT. Now, luckily, this tribunal will be common both for SGST and uh, CGST. Uh, this uh, will, uh, again, three months time is uh, there. Again, when you file appellate with this uh, appellate tribunal, you have to pay further 10 percent of amount of uh, tax interest and penalty. So total your 20 percent gets uh, blocked. And in some cases, commissioner has been given power to say that you must pay higher amount or something like that. That is not correct. Now, uh, any person can be authorized to appear before tribunal. Now, uh, now this is a very funny provision that uh, Advocate can appear, chartered accountant can appear, cost accountant can appear, company secretary can appear, and any person can appear. 
That means any such practitioner, even if he is not advocate, even if he is not CA, he can still appear if it is he is empowered by the uh, uh, taxable person. So uh, any person can be authorized to uh, appear. Of course, he himself can also appear, but an employee can appear on behalf of the uh, company. Now, uh, further appeals before High High Court only on substantial question of uh, law. As far as uh, facts are concerned, findings of uh, tribunal are final. So appeal against the file, order of tribunal can be filed only on substantial question of law. And again, it has to be not ordinary question of law, it has to be a substantial, substantial question of law. Then only appeal can be filed before High Court. After uh, High Court, you can file appeal with uh, Supreme Court also. Now, these are the powers which are given with under the GST law itself. But in addition, our constitution itself gives uh, powers to Supreme Court uh, and High Court. These are called extraordinary powers or writ powers. The Article 226 gives writ powers to uh, High Court. So these powers are not, uh, this cannot be controlled by uh, GST law. Now, for example, under GST, you can file appeal to High Court only on substantial question of law. But under it, you can file uh, appeal under uh, any other. If, of course, you have to justify why uh, normal remedy is not sufficient. But otherwise, there are no restrictions on High Court on uh, writ powers. Similarly, under Supreme Court also, uh, for special legal petitions, there are no restrictions. If uh, Constitution feels, uh, Supreme Court feels that the issue is worthwhile, uh, uh, taking cognizance of uh, Supreme Court can admit uh, SLP. So these are extraordinary powers and cannot be controlled under any act. Sir, currently uh, appeal relating to issue of rate of duty or valuation of excise duty are directly... Uh, now they, they have not made such distinction in uh, uh, GST. Now, at least in the draft law. Now, there are provisions for prosecution and compounding of uh, offences. Copy prosecution means arrest, uh, uh, I mean, uh, imprisonment, fine. That can be imposed only by uh, criminal courts. It cannot be imposed by uh, commissioner or uh, government authority. Then GST is on e-commerce that we already discussed that provision for collection and tax at source. Remission of tax on supplies found to be deficient due to uh, natural causes, we have to apply for remission. Then there is provision for advance uh, ruling. Today provision for advance ruling is that uh, once he gives the advance ruling, you are stuck with it. Only you have to uh, file writ with High Court, otherwise there is no remedy. Uh, but now, there is a, uh, in this model GST law, we have made a provision for appeal against decision of the advance authority. To that extent, it is improvement over the uh, present provision. But one interesting that this ruling of advance authority is only on for that party. That ruling is not applicable to other. other. But tribunal, tribunal decisions is applicable in all such similar situations. But decision of advance authority is only for that particular specific. specific. Uh, but generally I don't think it is advisable to go for uh, advance uh, ruling. If at all you want to be safe side, then another one option is to disclose all the material facts. Because once you disclose all the material facts, then government cannot, our department cannot say there is suppression of fact or willful misstatement, and then penalty cannot be imposed. So if at all you want to be safe side, then at, uh, instead of advance ruling, uh, the simpler option is to make a uh, disclosure. And once you make a disclosure, then there is a time limit uh, for uh, raising a demand, there is also you can, so penalty cannot be imposed because you have disclosed all the uh, material fact. So instead of advance ruling, you can consider the aspect of uh, disclosure also. Then of course there is a provision of settlement of uh, commission, uh, that is if it is a one-time offence, you say, okay, I will pay the tax and my penalty and let me get uh, free of that. So that provision is there in settlement commission, it is there in income tax uh, also. Then there is a power of pre to president to remove difficulties because uh, you cannot envisage what sort of uh, problem can arise uh, in the implementing of GST. 
So these are the special powers which are given to president. That if at all he feels that this provision in the uh, constitution is not uh, workable, uh, then he can issue a uh, order for removal of Of course, it has to be on the basis of uh, recommendation of GST council. But this power is of course required because you cannot envisage all sorts of difficulties and all sorts of uh, situations that can arise. Okay, so now if we conclude that IGST and uh, concept of supply are really game changer. They, are change, they will change the exact, uh, entirely change the present uh, tax structure. And again, is GST is tax on goods and services. No distinction between goods and services. GST is consumption based tax with destination principal tax is paid where the goods or services are consumed. That is the basic uh, fund of uh, GST. And one of the idea of GST again, as I repeat, the taxes and goods will move together. That will really ensure seamless movement of uh, goods across India. So, IGST will ensure a national GST. So, we should safe journey in jungle of uh, GST. And thank you. Wish you all the best.